You have prepared yourself for death and are calm and relaxed. What? No, I'm not. <laughs> I still have so much to do. All right. Uh, when suddenly you feel your body entwined in a mass of sticky fibers, there is a terrific jolt which leaves you breathless and stunned. The I impossible is happening. You are no longer falling, but rising. A net of clinging strands has caught you like a fly in a web. You are rising up into the sky towards the flying ship as quickly as you fell. Three bearded doors clad in bright padded battle jerkins, jerkins pull you aboard uh, an outrigger that runs the length of the hull. However, there is no time to express your gratitude, for the small sky ship is under attack from the Kron Riders. At the end of the outrigger, a dwarf is engaged in hand-to-hand -hand combat with a snarling Drakkar. He is obviously losing. As you rush to his aid, another- How did I get out of the net again? Ah, oh, well. <laughs> another of the evil lord warriors lands in the center of the craft on top of the fortified platform. If you wish to help the dwarf, or if you wish to leap from the outrigger to the platform. I wish to help the dwarf! I want to save his life if I can. The Drakkar is strangling the dwarf. Oh, that's not nice. As he catches sight of you, he releases his grip and smashes his mailed fist into the dwarf's face, sending him tumbling into space. Aw, you jerk. You are inflamed by his, this cold-blooded murder. You draw your weapon and attack. Yes, I do. I'm going to kick me some ass. That's right. Due to the speed of your attack, do not deduct any of your own endurance points for the first round of combat. Yeah, that's right. Because I'm pissed killing a dwarf that I've never met before that might have saved my life. You jerk. Alright, so he's got 25 endurance points and a combat skill of 18. I have 31 endurance points and a combat skill of 24. I outclass him severely. And I haven't even pulled out the summer sword yet. <laughs> Let's get it on! He's at 16. I have lost nothing? Yeah, because I'm already at 29. Oh, good. So I lost nothing either way. And he's at 10. I'm down to 25. He's zero. Murdered him in three rounds and only lost like four endurance points. Actually, he got me pretty good there. All right. What, ha what happy music for murder? <laughs> I know sometimes I, I put on battle music. You know, in battles, but I try not to do it too often because it would lose its its epicness. So we're gonna stick with the happy music for now. The Drakkar falls to his knees and makes a horrible rasping noise as he tries in vain to prise open his shattered death mask. Your blows have staved his helm, and the buckled metal has fractured his skull. You lash out with your foot and kick him from the outrigger, sending him spiraling down to the lake. Inaram to join the dwarf he murdered. But the dwarf is neither dead nor hundreds of feet below. He hangs by his foot, unconscious, snagged in the netting below the outrigger boards. <laughs> you grab the dwarf's leg and haul him to safety before continuing the fight. The platform looks empty. No heads are showing above its armored parapet. But you sense something is wrong. Instinctively, you leap from the outrigger onto the main hole, your weapon poised to strike. Ducking beneath the boom cell, you clamber onto the platform in time to witness a desperate struggle. The blonde-haired magician is pinned to the deck, his left arm skewered by a spear. With a staff in his right hand, he's trying to fend off a dismounted Kron rider. The Drakara senses your presence. He whirls around and draws a twisted black scimitar from his scabbard. Well, wait. So what was he using before? I guess the spear? But the spear is in his arms. Or was he just, like, trying to claw baned into death with his fingernails? <laughs> Alright, um... So, combat skill 18, endurance 25. If... If you win the fight in the last three rounds of combat or less... Okay, so... So we gotta do this fast. So let's go back to battle. BATTLE! He has a combat skill of 18. I have a combat skill of 24. He has endurance of 25. I also have an endurance of 25 at the moment. Let's get it on! He's down to 16. I'm down to 23. He's dead. <laughs> Two rounds of combat. I must have got him in the eye. In the eye, I tell you. With the broadsword. Let me tell you, that hurts pretty fiercely. The Drakara curses you with his dying breath. 
his cry fading as he falls from the platform. You rush to aid your wounded countrymen, but the battle is not yet over. A Kron rider is swooping towards you, a crossbow leveled at your head. He fires and the bolt shoots towards your face. Then a shrill metallic whine rings in your ears as the bolt miraculously rotches away, deflected by an invisible shield. Hey, if you got the star pendant, yes, we already have the star pendant. Bainton lowers his staff, the trace of a weary smile on his pain-racked face. Alas, I was too slow to protect myself, Lone Wolf, he says, glancing at his arm. You kneel at his side and free the spear that pins him to the floor. The wound is serious. Hastily, you staunch the bleeding with strips of cloth torn from his dark blue robes. You recognize the robes, for they are the attire of a journey master. It seems that young Bainton has achieved distinction among his brother magicians since you last met. It appears that we are fated to meet in their company, he says, still watching the Quran riders anxiously. Help me to my feet. We must escape before they drag us from the sky. You support the magician as he grasps the ship's helm, a radiant crystal sphere with hundreds of glowing facets set upon a slim silver rod. No sooner has his hand closed around the crystal than, the tr than there is a tremendous explosion. Oh, come on. <laughs> One thing after another after another. The explosion is followed by a huge cloud of smoke, which engulfs the cabin perched in the, on the rear deck. As the noise rumbles across the desolate salt plain, you hear an agonizing shriek of a wounded Kron. It spirals past the platform, a ragged hole rents in its broken wing. Oh, okay, it wasn't the ship exploding, it was... It was guns! Yay! Look, we got a picture of a dwarf with a gun, and he's rather happy. The smoke clears to reveal the grinning face of a dwarf at the end of the cabin window. Uh, at the cabin window. A smear of soot blackens his rosy cheeks and exaggerates the whiteness of his crooked teeth. He is holding a tube of smoking steel that you assume to be a magical staff until you notice that each of the dwarfs carry an identical staves. As they point them at the swooping crown, gouts of smoke and flame bellow from their tips. Suddenly you realize that the weapons and their wielders are the dwarves from the mountain kingdom of Bor, armed with one of the inventions for which the ingenious artisans are justly famous throughout Magnamund. So they got guns! Yay! I want one of those. <laughs> the Kran are terrified by the noise. They turn their leathery tails and fly away. The Drakara riders powerless to stop them. The primitive guns have claimed only one victim, but nevertheless they have driven off the enemy saved and saved the skyship from disaster. Bainden steers the craft around, banking steeply until the ship faces the darkening peaks of the southern mountains and distinct V-shaped cleft of the Dehur Pass. Choose a random number because this has been going so well for me today. Eight! Sorry, hang on. The dwarves are clearing the deck of battle debris. A dead drakkar uh, lies sprawled face down across the pile of chest and sacks roped beneath the boom sail. As the dwarves grab his legs and cast him over the side, he suddenly springs to life, sending the dwarves tumbling in all directions. He screams like a fiend, his black axe cutting a wide arc around his blood-smeared body. A curse, vile and evil, echoes from his death mask as he draws back the axe to throw. His target is you. Uh, if you have the Kai discipline of hunting or sixth sense, I do. Yay, I don't even have to tr pick the random number table this time. You dive aside, your Kai skill saving you from the axe that is spinning towards the platform. Suddenly, a deafening bang rings out and the Drakkar is flung backwards, his breastplate torn open by the dwarf shot. He gives a long, agonizing death cry as he disappears from sight, tumbling into the darkness that surrounds the speeding skyship. As if in answer to the shot, a menacing roll of thunder rumbles across the darkening plain from Barrakish. It is as if the city itself were cursing your s escape. Ha <laughs> ha! Take that, you crazy city! Alright, uh, Bainden appears at your side, his face lined with concern, as he offers a shaky hand to help you to your feet. You notice that the makeshift bandage which binds his wound is soaked with blood. He is pale and weak and close to collapse. Uh, if you have the Kai Discipline of Healing, yes, I do. 
I have pretty much everything right now. Clasping your hands around Bainden's injured arm, you concentrate your Kai skills on healing the torn muscle and splintered bone. The warmth of your healing powers numbs the pain and repairs the internal damage sufficiently to be able to remove the blood-soaked strips of cloth. The wound is still open, but you have saved the limb. We'll help him now, Lone Wolf, shouts- Oh, uh, we'll help him now, Lone Wolf, shouts a strange voice. You are surprised by the bold claim- Really? The bold claim- Is it really that bold of a claim? <laughs> and turn around to discover who has made it. Two dwarves clamber onto the platform and hurry to their young captain's side. One flicks open a red velvet satchel strapped to his barrel-like chest and removes a glass vial and a clean, clean linen bandage. They attempt, they attend to the wound, and as his strength returns, Bainden listens intently to your account of the terrifying events that have led up to this meeting. As you conclude your woeful tale, Bainden speaks, his voice full of grim determination. The future of Summerlun rests in our hands, Lone Wolf. We must stop Dark Lord Hakon from destroying the Book of the Magna Kai. I have heard tell of the tomb of the Mahan from the nomads of the Dry Main. They say that it is a terrible place, a place of horror and death, for what little is there, what little there is left to die there. Oh, for what little is there left to die there. Your face conveys the disappointment you feel upon hearing these words. However, all is not lost, says Bainden, undaunted. There is a man who can guide us there. A man, his name is Tipasa Idurok. Tipasa the Wanderer. It is he we must seek, for he is the only man who has ever entered the tomb of the Mahan and lived to tell the tale. Bainden takes over the helm of his extraordinary ship, the Sky Rider, as the dwarves call it, speeds through the gathering darkness towards the Dahar Pass. Visibility diminishes with each passing minute until finally you can see no further than the outriggers. You feel uneasy as... Uh, blah, 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 blah. Uh, I lost my place. You feel uneasy. If the Sky Rider veers but a fraction off course, you will be smashed to pieces against the mountainside. Do not worry, Lone Wolf, says Norlum, the dwarf with the velvet satchel. The captain will see us through. Bainden stands with his hands resting lightly on the glowing crystal, relaxed as if in a trance. His eyes are closed and a crackle of energy like fine white lightning traces the intricate pattern over his forehead and temples. The dwarf leads you to the cabin at the rear of the craft, where the crew are excitedly recounting their victory over their Kran riders. They are seated about a table cluttered with plates of steaming food and jugs of foaming ale. The rich smell of spiced meat and boar brew fills your nostrils, reminding you of how ravenously hungry you are. You make short work of the meat and marrow placed before you. Restore three endurance points. Yay! Plus, what, the two, three? The three I've done so far? So we're at six endurance points, which will leave us at 29 so far. Yay, hooray for healing. However, you are unsure about accepting the jug of ale. Boar brew is so strong that many cities in Magnamon have been banned for fear of the havoc it can cause. If you wish to accept a jug that is notorious ale... Oh, what the heck? Yes! I'm gonna do it! Ha 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 ha! The ale is thick and creamy with a taste like malted apples. You lower the half-empty tankard and wipe away the froth from your lips and sleeve. Pick a number for the random number table. If your current endurance points total is less than 15, deduct 2 from the number. If your endurance total, total is above 25, add 2. If you reach the high rank of Savant, add 3. So I get to add 5 to this number. Alright. So random number table time, plus 5. 6 plus 5. Yay! I'm not going to die from alcohol poisoning. <laughs> the dwarves continue their meal, pausing only to light large wooded, uh, hooded pipes. Through the bluish hue of the pipe smoke uh, that clouds the low cabin roof, you notice that they are casting nervous glances at you, as if you might explode at any moment. After five minutes have passed, Norrim rises a tankard and proclaims a toast. To Lone Wolf, a man among dwarves. The dwarves gruff, uh, guffaw at uh, Norlim's weary toast and rise their tankards and salute to your courage and fortitude. 
Fortitude. Blah, blah. The boar brew has loosened their tongues, and they are eager to tell you of their past exploits. You learn that the dwarves were once the crew of a more conventional vessel, a merchant man that sailed the Tintarius of southern Magnamund. The Tintarius is a vast expanse of lakes and landlocked seas, which connect to form a continuous canal stretching nearly 3,000 miles. They were created as uh, the Remrift of Durinor by a massive landslide slide three years ago <clears throat> sorry <laughs> I keep I am doing horribly tonight three years ago the dwarves former captain a dwarf named Quan lost his ship cargo and crew whilst gambling at cards it seems the unfortunate captain was unaware of Bainden's true profession until it was far too late as a result Bainden became the dwarves captain and ever since they have adventured with him across the lands and skies of southern Magnamont what Bainden's a cheat that's not cool man that's not cool Alright, the Skyrider itself was given to Bainden by the mag magicians of Desi in return for his help in defeating the Gagadoth, a monstrous creature that terrorized their land, over which their own sorcery could not prevail. The Skyrider was traveling from Desi on its way to Barrakish when you appeared. The dwarves have overheard your talk with Bainden and are excited at the prospects of a new adventure. They seem undaunted by the deadly dangers they will, that it will certainly involve. The fatigue of your ordeal finally catches up with you. You are finding it impossible to keep your eyes open. Norlim shows you to a bunk in the hole of Skyrider. Gratefully, you climb into bed and pull the blankets over your aching limbs. Norlim apologizes that the bunk is too short, <laughs> but his words fall on deaf ears as you are already asleep. Restore two endurance points for the much needed rest, plus the, uh, the three I've already gotten for the numbered sections. Or is it two? Let's do two. So I'm um, back up to 33. Yay! Hooray for healing! You wake shortly after dawn to the sound of snoring dwarves and the low hum of Skyrider of the Skyrider. Gathering your equipment, you climb on deck to find everything in shadow, for the Skyrider is hovering beneath a massive outcrop of sandstone that juts out from the side of the mountain, thousands of feet above the valley floor below. Bainden stands at the helm, but he is no longer in a trance. Cron Riders, he says, pointing to the sun-bleached valley beyond the shadows. They arrived with the dawn. You stare out across the alien landscape, a mountain valley filled with pillars of massive, uh, of massive and precariously balanced boulders. The Vesagonians call this place Kus, the Needles. The rocky columns reach so high into the sky that an avalanche seems unavoidable. Perched upon two of the columns are Kran and Drakar Riders, scouring the valley with telescopes. An hour passes before they take to the air and disappear. Trim the boom sails, Bosun Norlem orders Bainden, his voice barely audible over the increasing hum of Skyrider. We've a fast run ahead. If you possess the black crystal cube, no, I don't, which is a good thing, because I think that like explodes or leads them to you or something. So I don't have that special item. The voyage through the Coos is breathtaking. The Skyrider glides between the towers of rock that rise from the valley floor with fantastic and unearthly grandeur. Far below sulfurous water bu bubbles uh, from fissures, in the orange ground the streams of hissing lava caravay circular channels with, uh, blah, 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 which glow like motes of liquid fire. You watch the sky, but there are no signs of the enemy. Icarish, says Bainden pen uh, pensively, the Eagle's Lair. That is where we will find Tipasa the Wanderer. It is the place of his birth and the home of his family. He roams the dry main, but he always returns to Icarish. It is late afternoon when you reach the hills beyond the Kus to overlook the town of Icarish. Bainden moors the Skyrider at the pinnacle, uh, to a pinnacle of stone, and a rope ladder is lowered to the ground. It has been decided that you and he will enter Irkarish on foot to locate Tipasa, while Norlim and the crew wait f in hiding for your, you to return. The sight of the Skyrider hovering above the main mountain town would be sure to arouse unwanted interest, interest in your arrival. 
You and Bainden prepare yourselves for your mission by staining your skins with brown copala berries and dressing in the gray and white robes commonly worn by the mountain people of this region. You bid farewell to Norrim and set off across the barren hills. Pick a random number table! Alright. Zero. Alright, zero through two. Hang on a second. Without the breeze of the speeding Skyrider to cool you, the heat of the mountains is almost unbearable. You trudge across the loose reddish sand, your faces covered to keep the dust from choking your throats. All that seems to grow in this desolate waste is the wire-hard grass that tears at your boots and leggings. As you reach the outskirts of Ikarish, you pass a small round hut where a goat is eating from a manger by the door. A man appears at the darkened doorway and bids you welcome. He touches his forehead in salute to friendship and invites you to enter his humble home. If you possess the Kai Discipline of Sixth Sense, I do! I do possess the Kai Discipline of Sixth Sense. You sense that the man show of friendship is genuine. He may be able to help you find Tipasa the Wanderer if you accept his hospitality. Do you wish to enter his home? Yes, I do, then. I always trust my Sixth Scent. Scent? <laughs> sixth sense. Uh, the man is short of stature, but broad-shouldered and strongly built. Physical characteristics common among the tough mountain dwellers of Vas in Vasagonia. He pulls a cork from a bottle of lime green wine and pours three large measures into the earthenware cups. Kursha! He exclaims and downs the wine in one swift gulp. If you wish to follow his example and drink the strange wine, I do! Despite your misgivings, the lime green wine tastes delicious. A warm glow radiates slowly from your stomach, filling you with a comfortable sense of well-being. Restore two endurance points. All right, woohoo! We're back up to full, folks. Back up to full. The man looks delighted by your reaction to his wine and offers to sell you a bottle for five gold crowns. If you wish to buy a bottle of Kurashash, Pay the man five gold crowns and make the necessary adjustments. There's enough for the bottle to restore for the four endurance points. Um, sure, why not? <laughs> it's not like I, uh, I need the money, right? All right, so 37 and another potion plus four. Because we always want healing potions. We've needed them so much so far. <laughs> I'm giving the guy money, stimulating the economy and all that. If you wish to question him about Tipasa the Wanderer, I do. Ah, Tipasa, he replies thoughtfully. He lives near the Doga Market, but exactly where his home is, I am not sure. I haven't seen old Tipasa for years. If you should find him, remind him of Kasimin, the goat herd. He still owes me 12 crowns. That I have not forgotten. You thank the goat herd for his help and bid him farewell before continuing your trek to Ikarish. You follow a path along the dry gully, the bed of an ancient river that once flowed through the mountains. An arid breeze flows uh, below eddies of red dust along the banks of dead earth. The white-walled buildings of Akarish suddenly appear, and at the dust, as the dust settles, you find yourself standing in a small square close to the open archway of the town's east gate. Perched upon the tall basilite monolith is the center of the square is an eagle, the emblem of this mountain town, cast in bronze. Three bronze arrows are held in its beak, each indicating an exit from the square. Alright. If you wish to go north towards the uh, Dogar Market, yeah, I don't think we need to read any of the other of these. Of course, that's exactly where we need to go. So that's where we're going. Forty paces along the street is a barracks. Uh, is a barracks, a long white wash building with ugly square windows. A soldier sits dozing in the evening sun with his spear resting across his lap. Small children are tossing hollowed out. Larnuma fruits at him, trying to catch them on the tip of his spear. <laughs> okay. Opposite the barracks is a tavern with a line of saddled Dorgas tied to a rail near the main door. The brain of these sand horses reveals the sound, uh, rivals the sound of revelry drifting from the tavern door. If you wish to enter the tavern, or if you wish to continue on the street towards the Dorgara market. 
Um, I'm gonna go to Daragao Market. <laughs>